this story. We are joined now by Mark Howard, a civil rights lawyer who has represented over 30 clients in wrongful convictions. He is a professor of government and law at Georgetown, where he is the founding director of the Prison and Justice Initiative. He's also the founder and president of the Frederick Douglass Project for Justice. Mark, thank you for being here. Sure. For people watching this who think finally justice because of these units, you say not so fast. Well, it's a beautiful story. I'm so happy for Chanel Capers. I've been involved in multiple exonerations and prison releases, and I'm just so overjoyed for him and his family. But the problem is that we have such an epidemic of wrongful convictions. Uh, serious scholarly estimates say that roughly 5% of all convictions are of the wrong person. With two, over 2 million people in prison, that's 100,000 people. So to have an isolated incident like that is a wonderful story, but we need to look at all the people whose cases we're never hearing about. And the problem with conviction integrity units is that it's the very same office that actually contributed to the wrongful conviction that we're asking to review itself. So while I applaud the Queen's DA, Melinda Katz, and she's done a tremendous job in this case and in many others, the problem is that the CIUs all around the country, most of them are doing absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. So they've set up an office. There are 97 of them, but 46 haven't had a single exoneration. And most have had one or two. Her office has had over 100, which is really remarkable. But What's troubling is that they give this false pretense that there's a serious review taking place. And for the people who just get ignored, and I'm involved in a case in Chester County, Pennsylvania, where we've, for 16 months, have been trying to get them to look at a case. They wouldn't even respond mm -hmm. and acknowledge receipt of our case. And the evidence is sitting there, ready to be tested. And it's been there for 24 years. We can't get a response. So it's troubling that many DA's offices are starting to create something that's giving the illusion of serious mm -hmm self-review, but there's no autonomy, there's no independence, and often there's very little fairness. Because in some ways, this is a conflict of interest. Exactly. Because when you expose that this case was mishandled, then you're exposing the lack of care, the mismanagement of the case within the office. Exactly, because the vast majority of proven exonerations by DNA had prosecutorial misconduct. So you're asking the very same office, often the very same people. It might have been their own cases or their colleagues. And so what's the incentive there? So Typically, it's to oppose testing, oppose review, oppose new evidence, oppose release. So that's why this debate is a good one, and I'm glad we're having it. I'm going to yeah. push back on you a little sure. bit. I just want to note, in Shamel's case, it was a different DA and a different team of prosecutors. Yeah, so the new critical. DA comes in and says, we have to take a look. Yeah. But are you letting, Mark, the perfect scenario where we get equal justice under law, are you letting the perfect be the enemy of the good? No, I want there to be more conviction integrity units, but I want them to have independence, autonomy, fair review. So it could be by appointing people who are former defense attorneys, appointing people from the Innocence Project and other organizations like mine. That people work. like you. Exactly. I, I would have more faith if I knew that there were people who understand the real nature of wrongful convictions, who actually have had a stake in exonerations to look at the misconduct in that very office. Instead, they just sort of put a wall around and say, trust us. I'm not going to trust the very same people who put countless, we're talking now, you know, over 100,000 people in prison for crimes they didn't commit. That is deeply troubling if you care about truth and justice. It, and it, I don't think they're getting at it. Is now. anybody getting it right? Well, I think Philadelphia, actually. They've had many Larry exonerations Krasner. in Larry Krasner's office. I think in Queens, I really applaud this work that they've done. They actually hired a former attorney from the Innocence Project who's leading up the conviction integrity. So in my view, it's actually not a coincidence that that office is having more exonerations. Most of them, it's just one of their line prosecutors who's suddenly in charge of actually policing essentially themselves. Mm -hmm. And so in the smaller counties out there that we don't hear about, it's just injustice being compounded with this false pretense of review and people are just getting buried, ignored. My mailbox is full of letters from people in prison begging to get their cases looked at. I look at as many as I can. We've been able to find so much more of a complete picture of truth and in few cases actually achieve justice. But honestly, working with conviction integrity units as they exist now mm -hmm. has been really uh, an exercise in despair. Yeah, I think it's important for people to know. And thank you for that story. Oh, it was you, important to hear Chanel's story. Mark Howard, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We appreciate me. it very much.